an overview of the book of Revelation. Lipot lang ni. This is not a blow by blow account. Lipot lang ni. And, and I pray that since we are going into a very interesting prophetic season, we will just have a good grasp of what the book of Revelation is all about. Okay. Introduction. Revelation is for everybody. It's for you and it is for me. Look at the beginning verse of Revelation. Chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. Okay. Please take note of a few words here that are very interesting. Revelation is basically showing something. Sometimes the Lord does not explain. He just shows. That's why some of you, you have visions and dreams that you cannot explain because sometimes the Lord does not explain. In fact, in the book of Revelation, there are many things there that are not explained. In the book of Daniel, many things that are not fully explained, they are just shown. Ginapakita lang. So in this season, be ready for more of things that are shown, even if you do not understand. Because Revelation season, prophetic season, is an outflow of things that will be shown. And it is shown to the servants what must soon take place. Okay. If you are serving the Lord, Revelation is for you. Okay. So it's not just for the Bible scholars. It's not just for the theologians. It's for the servant. If you are here in Nihop and you are preparing the chairs here, you're a servant. So you should read the book of Revelation. If you're a Sunday school teacher or a minister to children, you must read Revelation because you are a servant. It is for you. Okay. Number two, very important. Revelation is a unique book because it's the only book in the Bible that promises blessing to those who read the book itself. Of course, ang bilog na Bible is one whole book. But it is a book consisting of 66 books, 39 Old and 27 New Testament. Pero sa tanan nga libro, ang Revelation lang gidya sa introduction and anywhere else nga nagsiling sini. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy. Now, please take note of this. You are not required to understand. Just by reading, you are going to be blessed. Ako may challenge kiko sa taga ni Hope. Let's make it a project. Nga basahon ta ang Revelation. Kung ang strength ginatag sa ginoo sa imo, one chapter a day lang, okay? Kung gusto mo ubuson from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock in the evening, sige, balbalada. Basta, basaha lang. You don't even need to understand it. Just receive it as you read it. You are blessed when you read the words of the prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. Our attitude should be like Mary, the mother of Jesus. You remember, Mary did not understand many of the things that the angel of the Lord told her. In fact, there is a verse in the book of Luke which I like very much, about Mary. And Mary took all of these things in her heart. Because ginambalan siya, daw galibog ang ulo niya. Your, your son will be a savior of the people. He will save his people from their sin. Ginambalan man siya nga, he will be a king on, his, on the throne of his father, David. And then may sugpo ng angel, but a sword will pierce your heart. Wala siya ginambalan part isang cross. Wala siya ginambalan nga hanoton si Jesus. Wala siya ginambalan details. Gintagaan lang siya picture which is incomplete. And the word says, the Bible says, Mary took this in her heart. Many of the things you will read in Revelation are very difficult to understand. What are seal judgment? What are bowl judgment? Trumpet judgments? What is this? Uh, image that is seen here like this, like that. What is the woman of Revelation 12? And she is taken to the desert. What is the desert? If at first you read and do not understand, 
Don't worry. Just read it prayerfully and just receive it and just take it to heart. You will be blessed. You will be blessed. Okay. Number three. Revelation is understandable. Even though the details may not be fully understood, yet there is a sense that you will understand it in the spirit even if you do not understand it with your mind. But your spirit understands. Are you following? For example, the sense, they call it the sense, the sense that something is coming. What is coming? I don't know, but I know that something is coming. So on the one hand, you understand, even though you do not fully understand. Something is being revealed already piece by piece. That is the meaning of apocalypsis, meaning to lay bare, to make naked, to expose, to unveil, to remove, the cover, to disclose, to show. Revelation is this word. Okay. Now, to appreciate Revelation, we must be in the Spirit. Because chapter 1 verse 10 says, On the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit. Everything that you read in the book of Revelation, John was in the Spirit. And anong punto sina? We must have a certain posture when we come to the Lord to read the book of Revelation. Okay. This is just my personal testimony. I do not know if you will adapt this or you will agree to this. This is just my understanding. When I read the book of Romans, Romans, I pray, but I can understand it logically, rationally. Romans, about us being sinful. Kaya hindi ko na. We deserve to die in the hands of a holy God because God is holy. Kaya hindi ko na. And then, nagpadala siya substitute, justification, sanctification. Kaya hindi ko na. Pero lain magbasa sa book of Revelation. Lain nga tripping ang book of Revelation. Because when you approach it with your mind, ma-uplok ka diri. Ma-uplok ka. Basa ka sa Daniel, ma-uplok ka. Basa ka sa Ezekiel, ma-atras ka. Okay, ano ang himoon mo naton to be able to receive? We must be in the posture of the Spirit. Question, how in the world do I approach the book of Revelation in the posture of the Spirit? It's quite simple, at least in so far as my personal experience is concerned. I come to the Lord in this way. Lord, I am going to, book, to read the book of Revelation. There are many things here that are very strange. Lord, please give me the spirit of teachability. That even if I do not understand, just help me to have the patience to read. And whatever it is, you will download. It may be a sense. It may be an emotion. It may be a conviction. Even if doctrinally, though hindi it ko kagets, Lord, kaya may pagkatayog ni ang revelation. Just in the spirit of worship, in the spirit of teachability and humility, just read the book of Revelation. This is very critical because the spirit of the book of Revelation is what must soon take place. And it is near. Dua niya, sugpon. Something is taking place. And it is getting nearer. That is the spirit by which we approach the book of Revelation. Okay, Lord, something is going to take place. May matabo. Kaglapit na lang, kag nagalapit pagid. Wala ang ginoo, nagapangayo, nga insindihon mo gitanan. Ang ginasiling niya, basaha lang. Lord, wala ko kainsindi, basaha lang. Lord, may, may pagkatayog, basaha lang. No, hindi ko gini Lord ma-interpret, basaha lang. Just read it and take it to heart and you will be blessed. Okay, now, why was the book of Revelation written? What is the purpose? Okay, ari ang hint sa Revelations 1.9. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom. 
and patient endurance that are ours in Christ was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Here is the key kingdom. The book of Revelation is about a coming king and a coming kingdom that will be imposed on the earth. My regime nga i plaster sa kalibutan whether you like it or not kay may hari manog kadto. Ang ina nga hari makadtugid whether we like it or not. There is a kingdom that is going to be established. Okay, mamakot kami. Ti okay naman nakapilan ako na ang mga kabati sa kingdom. Dali lang gid. Amo na yung matabo sini. Ang ini nga kingdom, i-evaluate niya ni ang kingdom sa earth. Now, listen carefully. Anything that is not aligned with this coming kingdom is going to be destroyed. That is the whole theme of the book of Revelation. A kingdom is going to be established and it is going to be applied on all areas of our life. Love life, economic life, financial life, family life, social life, etc., etc., etc. The king is coming with his kingdom and anything that is not submissive, submissive to this kingdom Better watch out because, quote unquote, to use an earthly term, all hell is going to break loose because this kingdom is going to come in power. Okay, so that in Revelation 11 15, the seventh angel sounded his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ, and He will reign forever and ever. Amog ni ang key. Sang bilog nga book of Revelation. Sabi ni saya, kag sa simple ng istorya, whether we like it or not, the day is coming nga ang pagkaginoo sang ginoo, ipilit kag ihanot yan nagit sa kalibutan after thousands of years of grace. Ginainsultuhan siya, ginasunlog siya, nagsilingin siya nga laki sa bahay, bahay sa laki, ginahimuan lang desisyon, kaginaplakpakan, kaginasautan nga bahay sa bahay, laki sa laki. Sige lang. Why man siya kapangilat? Okay man lang siya. Nga kaon man ang nagainsulto sa iya, gagnami man lang pangabuhi, okay lang. Sige, hanyo lang. Da. Okay lang. Ginawalihan niya man sang kung nagamasakit sila, gapangamuyo, ginasabat niya man, ginaayo niya, okay, sige lang. Pero umabot gani, ini nga kingdom sa tion sang pagkari ni Cristo Jesus, tapos sige ang tanan nga wala nakasubmit sa sini nga kingdom. So the nature of this takeover is violent. The book of Revelation, I am sorry to tell you, is a violent book. The story is full of violence. It cannot pass the MTCRB rating. It is not good for children. It's not for general patronage. It is parental guidance required. Assuming the parent reads the Bible. Nga ang violent, grabe ni Amoning pinaka matay ugon nga libro sa bilog nga Bible. Earthquake, kilat, linog, hail, meteor falling, islands disappearing, people getting killed, angels attacking and warring, gira, suba nagadugo, bato gakahulog halin sa langit, islands nagakasplit. Mamakot ka nga, amo ng revelation, kay take over ang kingdom of God sa kingdoms of this earth. And that is going to be very violent. That is why, if you have a sense, if we have a sense that Jesus is coming nearer and nearer, watch out for the increase in violence in the world of nature. With volcanoes, in the typhoons, ma-increase na siya. Because may naga 
Resist. May hindi maghatag sa kalibutan. Ang tao hindi magpati nga maabot ang Diyos. Ang tao hindi magpatudlo nga tadlungon niya ng kabuhin niya kay maabot ang Diyos. Kag-upod sa tao nga hindi magkilala sa Diyos ang mga ang fallen angels, kag-demonyo nga nakaposisyon sa duta, hindi nila pag-i-surrender ang duta voluntarily. So, away gid, inkwintro gid ang matabo. This takeover is sure. There is no doubt about the outcome and who is going to win. Tapos na ni ang gira, sigurado na ni Sino Madaog, pero matabo gining gira, damo gid ni, I'm sorry to say, magkalamatay. Di ang ginoo, grace, ang ginoo, gugma, ang ginoo. Well, the Bible is very clear in saying, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call on Him while He is near. And siling sang book of Genesis, the Spirit of the Lord will not strive with man forever. He is going someday to come as judge, no longer as Savior. Why is this takeover so violent and so full of cataclysm and shaking? Because the book of Revelation tells us all the maneuvers and moves to take over the world by the kingdom of God are all going to be executed by the angels of the Lord. If men can afford to be violent, how much more power will the angels of the Lord pack? Uh, isa ka example sang angel because everything here is angel 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 and an angel in charge of the amoni in fact one of the amazing things about uh, the book of revelation is that there are angels assigned to the time the hour the day the second there is an angel assigned to do something on September 2015. There are angels assigned to do something on October 2015 and November 2015. Basta, it's fascinating. You read the book of Enoch as I support to the book of Revelation. Look at every move of the Lord is by angels. Now, isa ka example lang sini. Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10. Siling ni John. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun and his legs were like fiery pillars. Please take note of this angel. Ah. This angel was robed in a cloud. Ang iya nga panapton, ang clouds that you see. Ginasuksok yan lang. Ang iya nga ulo, rainbow. Can you imagine how tall this angel is? And this angel, he is described here in verse 5. The angel I had seen standing on the sea and on the land. One foot is on the sea and one foot is on the land. Grabe ni nga pagbaka ni isang angel. Ang isa ya katiil at to sa lawod, ang isa sa duta, ga isa sa sangkamot, ang panganod, ginapalapto niya lang, kag-ari di ang rinbo sa ulo niya, kag-inarace niya ang iyang kamot, kagasinggit siya sa langit, no more delay, no more delay, kaya gaayo na siya sa authority nga mamira na siya. Gaayo siya nga, sige na, no more delay, agawa na ning, bawi na ning kalibutan, sobra na ni ang ilang, uh, hindi pagkilala sa imo gino. Grabe niya, angels niya tanan, ma-execute sini. Okay. Anong practical implication sini? Common sense niya, common sense. Ni hope is prophetic and intercessory. Wala ta na ginakahuya, ginatindugan ta na. When I say prophetic and intercessory, we are open to all the prophetic moves that come along with intercession. Because of that, common sense. If angels of the Lord coordinated with some people for the first coming of Jesus, will He not coordinate with some people for the second coming of Jesus? 
Abi sinti dokumen. Bakero nga wala nakapa Bible school gin apiran sang angel. Isaka ulay isaka betroth virgin who is in the betrothal period gin apiran sang angel. Isaka priest gin apiran sang angel. Angels, angels everywhere appearing connected to the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, expect, expect to work with angels, to be ministered with angels. Last time, we had a discussion on the work of angels, and it was a very quick overview. Angels minister to people. During your prayer time, Jesus, when he was very tired in the Garden of Gethsemane, who strengthened him? Angels. Watch out in your prayer times. Angels will visit you to strengthen you as you grow weak in prayer. Because revelation and end time is angelic work. Angelic work. Angels were used to reveal the mind of God. Remember, it was not God who appeared to Daniel. It was the angel Gabriel. Daniel, you are highly favored. The moment you prayed for understanding, I was sent to give to you the answer. So some of you here are going to weep before the Lord and cry before the Lord for Bacolo City, for Negros Island. And I am sure that there will be angelic visitation. I do not know to you or to whoever, but I am sure that angels will visit because this is their time and this is the season for their work now to be done. The angels will come to those whom the Lord sends them and to those who are open to the ministry of angels. Do not close your doctrine to dealing with angels because the saints of the Lord, the children of the Lord on earth will work with the angels of the Lord in these last days. They will work together. The heavenly army will work with the earthly army. So the more time we spend in fasting, praying, prophetic operation, intercession, the more we will encounter traffic with angels in praise, in worship, in prayer, because that is the anointing of the book of Revelation in the last days. To whom is the Lord speaking in the book of Revelation? Who is the intended audience or recipient? Nga agin sulat ang book of Revelation. Grabe gini, pwerte gini ka, shocking. The book of Revelation was written or delivered for the consumption of the seven Churches, the Christians, the Christians, the Christians. Wala ni ginsulat para sa mga unbelievers para ipamahog-pahog sila. Ginsulat ni sa mga Kristuanon para o sisaon nila ang ila kabuhi. Kay may manug-abot, gina-check ang kondisyon sang churches kay ka mga dungul, kag ka mga lalaman sang iban nga churches. I'm sorry to say it is in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, there were seven churches. Ephesus, Myrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. And the one main message to all seven churches is overcome. That's the one main message. Lain-lain ang kondisyon sa kada church, pero ang punta sa message, isa lang, overcome. Ano ang i-overcome? Tanawan nyo kay Tanan nga problem sang believers and churches ari diri sa book of Revelation. Number one, ang Ephesus is a good church. Faithful, doctrinal, katahom sang iya nga, nga description diri sa uh, Revelation chapter 2, pero may dako siya nga problema. Here is the, the commendation for the book, for the church in Ephesus. Revelation chapter 2 verse 2. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men. You have persevered and endured many hardships for my name. Tiyamak mo ni, good deeds, hard work, perseverance, you endure hardship for my name. But I have one issue against you, says the Lord. You have forsaken 
your first love. You don't love me the way you used to. Faithful ka lang, gasimba ka man, ngatag ka man tights, gaisyo ka man siya, kinaisip-isip mo man. Kung hindi ka na passionate sa akon, hindi ka na gidya ng gigigil para sa akon. Sang una, sang the first time nga nakilala mo ko, nag-come forward ka to receive the Lord. One time sa imo nga kwarto, na-realize mo, nga palangga kasi gino, naghilibiyon ka, gid, grabe, gid. Tanan ang baba mo, Jesus na lang, tanan, ahay, naglakat ang panahon, daw nagplato ka, Faithful pa man ka, okay pa man ka, naway ka man nagapang lampingas. Well, pero, daw parehas ka sang nubyahanay, nga sang pagsugod-sugod, gid sang luyagay. Ang panawag mo, sweetheart. After a few years, sweet. After many more years, ah, wala na. Wala na, sweetheart. Ginasitsitan na lang. Over familiarity, why na intimacy with the Lord? That is the problem of the efficient church. The Smyrna church has to overcome persecution and suffering because they were getting vulnerable to affliction. The Smyrna church is said in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death and I will give you the crown of life. Okay. One of the last days anointing, one of the last days glory that will be poured out is the martyr anointing. That is already slowly to come out, slowly coming out. Martyr anointing. What is a martyr anointing? You will be surprised. We will be meeting many people, and maybe some of you are here tonight, that when you decide to give your life to Jesus and for His ministry, you don't care anymore if you will die or live. You will just go. And that, that, that anointing is beginning to come out. Some people are obeying the call to minister to very dangerous Muslim countries, and they do not care if they will come back alive or in a box. They do not care. The martyr anointing is being released in these last days. That is the anointing of the Smyrna Church, which is a book of Revelation anointing. And then Pergamum. Aha. The, the church in Pergamum is told to overcome satanic attack, which, which includes, among others, Balaamism. Ano ni ang Balaamism? Ibasahan nyo na lang paliyog, Numbers chapter 25 and chapter chapter 31. I cannot elaborate on this. Pero ini si Balaam, amunis siya ang nag in danger sa Israel kay ginsidyos niya ang Israel to intermarry with other tribes, other groups who are not believers in the Lord and worshippers of other gods. One of the things that the young people in this age will overcome is falling in love with people who are not in love with the Lord. That is a sin of Balaam. That is part of the spirit of Balaam. Ikaw ma daw mapatay ka sa ginoo. Nga ang higog maon mo, ang why give the meal ang ginoo sa iya. Nga ang magsagay ka, text, text, sina sa iya, kag mag-entertain, kag mag-date, date, sina sa iya. Kag kun magdayunay ka mo nga dua, magiging in-laws si Jesus kag si Satanas. Kaya tatay ang yawa, tatay mo ang ginoo, so nagpakasal ka mo. So father-in-law mo si Satanas. In the last days, we are praying that there will be young people, teenagers, in the midst of of uh, worldliness will make a stand. I will just be for Jesus and I will marry somebody who is madly in love with Jesus just like me. If he or she does not love Jesus, excuse me, let him go to wherever he wants to go. But I will be for Jesus. Amuna siya ang challenge sa Pergamum Church. 
And we have to overcome idolatry and sexual immorality and Nicolaitanism. Anong Nicolaitanism? Uh, one feature of Nicolaitanism, si, si Nicolaitan um, is a teaching which says that since we are, in a sense, uh, saved by grace, ti, wala na lang kaso kung anong qualities ang kabuhi mo kay total bugay na malang ni. So, kung lampingasan ka, buangit ka, traidor ka, uh, sige lang, kay ti, amugina, kay bugay lang ni tanan. So, uh, that we have to overcome that. We must not be like that. And then, Thyatira. Okay. The Thyatira Church was spoken to because it was a church that was gripped by the spirit of Jezebel, which is a sexual immorality spirit, and it was a spirit that uh, partook with things offered as sacrifice to idols. And it was an anti-prophet spirit, and it was an anti-Israel spirit. Jezebel was a famous uh, queen who was so against prophets, he, she wanted to kill all the prophets, and she was so against Israel. When you meet people who are anti-prophetic and anti-Israel, you know what kind of spirit you are dealing with. Sardis is a dead church. May simbahan nga patay. And this has to be overcome. What, is, what are the signs of a, of a person who is spiritually dead? A person who is spiritually dead, a person who is dead has no reaction. Kung may makita siya, wala agad siya reaction, kaya patay siya. And I am afraid that there is a huge percentage of the current church that is already spiritually dead. And forgive me for citing this as an example. When we watch TV and we see Bais Ganda, on our television sets. And we watch and we watch him or we watch her or whatever. There is no effect. Wala gidya. In fact, daw nami an malanta daw ga kadlo kadlo manta. And without our knowing it, we are watching her, him or whatever 30 minutes, 1 hour and maybe we are part of the 27 million followers niya sa Twitter and Facebook because she is he is the most famous and most popular celebrity in the Philippines now in terms of following in Facebook and Twitter tanawan niyo kung anong ang hairstyle niya sundon sang tanan when we watch things like that do we feel sad revolted you know that you are dead when you don't feel revolted anymore. You're dead. Why ka? Why ka conviction? Why ka? Why na mo na batyagan ang hapdi isang korazon sang Diyos? Spiritually dead. There are, there are people who are wala mo kung nagasiling nga mamantay kita. Pero when we go to worship, how many people are feel na feel for God? And how many people are totally unaffected by the songs in Ang iba niya dubu. Ang iba nagapiyong nakag nagari sa kamot. Kisa gatalang na sila nga galakata sila ipakanto sa banyo. Wala na sila kabalo. <laughs> Kay galupad na sila niya sa ano. Baw, ang iba niya. Nga panguyap. Kaya ginaisip nila kung kapilagid ginliwat ang hallelujah, hallelujah. Katorse, kinse, Disinwibi na ba? Liwat pagit. The dead church. Okay. Philadelphia is the faithful church. It must overcome the temptation to give up. There is a good church in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 3, verses 10 to 12. The Philadelphia church. It was told, do not give up. Hold on to what you have. That is the message. And you will be spared from the hour of trouble. And the Laodicea church is to overcome its lukewarmness. You are neither hot nor cold. May mga opinion, ang ma, may mga Christians nga wala na halos opinion. Are you for BBL or not? Watch BBL. 
Why kaya kita? Why kaya kita basa basa sa putus ang ibos? Why kaya kita? Are you for same sex marriage or not? Di ako ako yah, hindi ipro ti ano mo kaya kalibutan yah ti amon yah. Ti gusto mo nga sa Manila International Airport Terminal One, Terminal Two, Terminal Three, may CR for men, for women, then for amon yah. Kaya gin budget na nagwa sa newspaper. They are going to allocate pila ka millions of pesos for the construction of CRs, not for male, not for female. But so when when you pass by those things, what's your opinion about that? Ah, ti amo na lang times na modern. Why kaman ga approve? Why kaman ga disapprove? Hindi kaman apin? Hindi kaman kontra? An anong anong stand mo man? Ang problema si ni sa laudition church amo ning ginabuga. Sang ginoo, I will spew you out of my mouth. Wala kagid ya sang tinindugan. You are neither hot nor cold. So that is the message of the book of Revelation. Okay. Ikote ko lang ni, lipot lang ni nga slides, 23 lang ni. And we are more than halfway already. Okay. Ari ang punto. Maangkot ka mo, Brother Lindon, I thought that the purpose of the book of Revelation is the imposition of the Kingdom of the Lord upon this earth. Nga ang ang church man to ya. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Because the law in the kingdom of God says, judgment begins with the house of God. Mo gina ya? Ay abi ko ang mga unbelievers. Ah, sin o nagsiling si imo nga unbelievers. Ang una i-audit sang kuwa kag BIR sang langit. <laughs> ang mga anak sang Dios. Nga ah, because God is a God of justice and fairness. If he is going to call to account people who do not worship him, he will first hold to account people Who use His name, Lord, Lord? Did we not? Judgment begins with the house of God. Aring kulul ba ano? You read Ezekiel nine in Revelation in relation to Revelations nine. But you read first Ezekiel nine, then you read Revelations nine. Karon sa gabi pag pule nyo. Grabe na dang natabo sa Ezekiel nine. May mga angels da nga kakaladlukan sang ilang armas. Nga mga berdugo nga angels nga terribly gidya ka mga kaladlukan nga ginboy ansang Ginoo nga mamatay pero ginponggan anay kay may buot kag cute nga angel nga may laptop kag may ano secretary angel siling sang Ginoo kamo nga mga berdugo nga angel hold your fire ikaw nga angel anay Listaha anay ang tanan nga may mga marka sa ilang nga ulo. And begin in the temple. Siling sang angel, sino na ang listahon ko nga butangan marka sa ulo? Siling sang ginoo, those who weep and wail for the sins of the land. Intercessors. So siling sang ginoo. Tanda e ang mga intercessors start with the house of God. Put put ang e mark. Pag siling sang angel, tapos na Lord na markahan ko na siling sang ginoo. Then go out siling yas sa mga birdugo angels. Go out with your sword and shield and start killing. Ario, begin in the temple. Na ang unah ni lagson gidiang Christians. Hindi na siling taning uh, kaluluoy gining mga so-called unbelievers. Excuse me. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. That's why ang logical flow sa book of Revelation nga manog-abot ang forceful coming of the kingdom the churches are the first to be spoken to. Kumusta ka mo nga mga churches? Basahan nyo na lang ng warning sa mga dungol nga churches. Siling sang ginoo, I will spew you out of my mouth. Siling sang ginoo, a sword will come out of my mouth. Ginahambal ni against the church. Siling niya, you will be sick on your bed. Ginahambal ni sa church. Basahan nyo na lang, 
chapter 2 and chapter 3. Kay overview lang ni. So, grabe ginia. It begins with the house of the Lord. That is why, there is a new hope. We are trying so hard to position the church correctly. Hindi mo ni madala sa ministry, ministry lang. Tadlungon mo ginang kabuhi, tadlungon na ginang kabuhi, tinloan na ginang tadlungon na ginang We must be aligned with the Lord. Okay. Anong pag-takeover? Ara na kita sa Revelation chapter 5 to 16. Overview sa chapter 5 to 16. First wave, second wave, third wave. Hallelujah. Grabe nga attack ni. The army of heaven will come in three waves. The first wave is the seven seal judgments followed by the second wave, the seven trumpet judgments. Then the third wave, seven bowel judgments. Okay. I-explain ko anay ang seal because somebody gave this explanation. Ano meaning sang seal judgment? Sang unang at simpo in the ancient time sa east, kung magbakal ka duta, may parchment. Pirmahan ay gina, gina bayran ang presyo. Anong ginahimo? Ginalukot. Dason gina seal. Okay. Kung may nagposisyon sa duta mo, kag ginapahalin mo, kag hindi siya magpate nga ikaw nagbakal, ano ginahimo mo? Ginakwa mo to ang papel, kag ginabreak mo ang seal, kay ginapakita mo sa iya, ako ang tag iya sini. Amo ni ang spirit sang seven seal judgments. Ang ginoo, gaabris ang titulo, ginabreak niya ang seal, kaya ginapabalo niya sa kalibutan, sa bilog nga kalibutan, nga nabayran niya na ni ang ginbaligya ni Adan. Gininto ni si Tanas, si Adan, nga magpirma sang didob seal. Siling Adan, abi ko, nang ingkit lang ko sang bunga. Wala kabalo si Adan nga ginbaligya niya ang authority niya over the earth. Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, I give you dominion. Siling sang gino, listen to me, follow me, I give you dominion. Here comes Satan, did God say that you must not eat? Oh, to make a long story short, nagpati sila kay Satan, the dominion, the ownership was lost so that sang paglanding ni Jesus diri sa duta, Si Satanas, kabalugid nga ang titulo ara siya. Sila niya, gusto mo kalibutan? Hiya, ihatag ko ni sa imo, balik ang nakuha ko kay Adan, isa lang ginapangay ko sa imo, bawo ka lang sa akon. Remember? Hindi ang ginoo. Kay baklon niya gidya, balik. Patuluan niya gidya, dugo. So, ang titulo na kwa niya gidya, na sil, ti hindi pagyapon maghalin ang mga nagapuesto Balbalo niya gidya, i-break yung seal, ipakita. Matik over, gid ko niya. Okay. The seven seal judgments. Okay. Ano ning seven seal judgments? White horse, red horse, black horse, pale horse, solo martyrs, great earthquake. Ang red horse, amun ning great sword. Ang, ang white horse, the beginnings of conquest, pero daw hindi man mag-conquer, pero gasugod na. Then ang red horse, this is Revelation chapter 6, up to chapter 8, basahan nyo na lang. I cannot give you the details. This is just overview. Red horse meaning great sword. Magamo ang kalibutan. Magamo ang kalibutan. May pinatsa na sa kalibutan. Black horse is famine, scales. Pale horse is uh, sickness, pestilence, disease, and death. Then martyrdom. Then great earthquake. Remember, there is a great earthquake in the first wave. Basta ang Bible na gasiling, there will be a great earthquake. And then, the seventh seal will open the seven angels to release the seven trumpet judgments. Anong seven trumpet judgments ya? Ah, wow. Naglain na gid. One third of the grass and trees will be born, will, will, will burn. First trumpet judgment. A great mountain burning falls into the sea. Siling ko nila, basi comet ni or asteroid may go sa kalibutan grabing epekto sini second trumpet judgment na third trumpet judgment a great star burning like a torch fell on a third of the rivers or water systems 
Di, is that another comet? So may comet. Kandili may comet. Kandili naigo ng kalibutan. Ngayon pasundan mo pagin sa tubig. Fourth trumpet. Sun, moon, stars, go dark for one-third of the day. Ano ni siya? Planet X, alignment, whatever. Ang effect siya na sa kalibutan, terrible again. Fifth trumpet, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Ano ni? Locos or creatures that appear like grasshoppers. Google, CERN in your internet, read the book of Enoch. Okay, I'll, I'll just tell you about the book of Enoch. Book of Enoch, chapter 10 and chapter 15. I have a copy of the book of Enoch uh, in, in the house. Okay. Mama, kung ito, nga nagabasa ka sa book of Enoch, why man sa Bible? Because Peter and Jude referred to the book of, of Enoch. Although it's not part of the Bible, they apparently had respect for that book. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, who did not suffer death but was taken to heaven, was the writer of the book of Enoch, recognized by all believers during that time, including the apostles Peter and Jude. And according to Enoch, he mentions the leader of the Genesis 6 group of angels who lasted after women and produced Nephilims, produced demon spirits, Anong inhimo sa ila? Gin-arrest sila, gin-bind sa dungeon under the earth to be released again to the earth to bring affliction to the people of the earth before the day of the Lord comes. So, if you will read the book of Enoch, it looks like the fifth trumpet will be those demons that were arrested, will be released on the last day. So, basahon yun na ang CERN, if that might be it or not, because nga ang, uh, ang gwa sila, mabuho sila sa kalibutan. And if you read that in the internet, something strange happened. When they set up that project, there were voices and sounds and screams during the time that they made very eerie and very wild and very scary things happened in the construction of the CERN project. Okay. The sixth trumpet, fallen angels from Tartarus release, one third of mankind are killed. That is seven trumpet judgments. Pero may mabato pagin sa ginoo. Hindi pagin sila yung mag-surrender sa ginoo. Kaya ang beast ganyang ilaya nga opdan. Te, ball judgments. Third wave. Ugly and painful sores and balls on people who have the mark of the beast. Hamak mo amun na ito nga nabalbalan nila sa ginoo. Hindi pagin sila yung mag-ano. Maupod sila ya sa the great leader of the earth called the beast. And all sea life died. Second bowl, third bowl, rivers and springs of waters become blood. Fourth bowl, scorching sun, burning people alive. Fifth bowl, total darkness with source and bowls, men cursing God. Sixth bowl, Euphrates invasion, kings of the east, Armageddon. Seven bowl, judgment, global earthquake, islands move, huge hailstones falling, men killed. The plague was so terrible. These are the seven bowl judgments. In between these events, Sinisang seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls are the 144,000 Jewish witnesses. The son my angels with a little scroll, basahan nyo lang sa Revelation chapter 10, my seven thunder judgments, pagit nga wala gin mention, ay <laughs> terrible. So, ang iba ni Galuho ni silang, ano ning seven thunder judgments? Kung may seven seals na, may seven trumpets, may seven bowls, I'll just read to you Revelation chapter 10, verse 4. When the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven, seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down. So this is a mystery. May ikaapat pagid nga seven? Okay now, break, anay kayo daw, mamangkot ka mo. Di ano na lang kita sini? Dali lang kita. Kung... 
Actually, sa punta ko ni dapat iambal eh. Pero subong lagi nakita kong iba na nga itsura sa inyo dahil hindi naging niya ma-spelling. Dahil hindi na kamo magbalik sa ni Hope sa sining nga mga lecture. Okay. Kung bride ka mo ni Christ, ang ini nga mga istorya, hindi gini magtayog. Amo ni magtugasang dako nga kabalaka sa atong tagipusoon sa iban nga wala nakakilala kay Kristo. Pero hindi na nga kabalaka para sa atun kay grabe ang pagpalangga sang bridegroom sa iyang bride. Ang question diri kon bride kita kon hindi. Basta that's already getting ahead of the point. But there are two witnesses there, the two great witnesses nga ipatyon then the, who will rise from the dead. Then there is the woman and the dragon Revelation 12 including the beast of the earth. What that woman is and who that dragon is basahan niyo lang Revelation 12. Then the lamb and the 144,000 who had his name and the name of the Father on their foreheads, they sang a new song with the three angels, then the Antichrist with his number 666. Amo na ang nagakalatabo during those seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls. Okay. Lapit na ni mag-end. In the book of Revelation, there are two great women and two great cities mentioned. The first is Babylon, who, who is also called the great prostitute. The second is Jerusalem, the faithful bride. Sang nagapatapos ang book of Revelation, sumugod chapter 14, pauli sa chapter 18, gina-reveal na ni ang the great prostitute. Gina-reveal man ang the faithful bride, chapter 21, chapter 22, ara da ang faithful Bride. Mamangkot ka mo, anong utok sa Holy Spirit nga sa pagtakop sa libro, sa maragta sa kalibutan, duwa kabayi, ang ginhimo niya, sa kadamo na mo nga example, hamak mo illustration, you can use many illustrations. Why did the Spirit of the Lord choose the symbolism of the great prostitute and the faithful bride? Hallelujah. Kay para hapos in Chindihon, kag malansang sa aton nga ulo ang punto. In the last days, the issue that will make or break us is whether how much we love the Lord and whether we are faithful and loyal to Him alone. What is the difference between the great prostitute and the faithful bride? A prostitute sleeps with anybody. Okay man na siya sa Christianity. Pero kung mag-ininom to sa ano, kag mag, ano, okay man na to siya, maupod man na to siya. Ma-attend man na siya sa church camp, kag ma-fellowship man na siya, okay man na siya. Pero mag-tanaw pornography to sa ano, okay maupod man na siya. That is the behavior of a prostitute. A prostitute lies with anybody. In these last days, the Spirit of the Lord is going to telescope the whole world. Who is the prostitute and who is the bride? Ang bride ya is loyal only to one. The bride is called a pure virgin. She is not going to be touched by anybody except her husband. And gapatapos na ang Bible, ang pulian sang istorya, duwan na lang kababae. Babylon or Jerusalem? Prostitute con faithful spouse. Amo na lang yun ayah. Amo na ang espiritu sa last days. Wala ni komplikasyon ang book of Revelation. By in na lang na ang European Union, ang Ten Nation Confederacy, Global World Order. Dira ka na lang sa dua kabay. Great prostitute or faithful spouse? So kung wala, kagit may naiinsindihan sa Revelation, baul pa ahul na yun. Hindi ka kainsindi sang kinalain, sang prostitute, kag sang spouse. Amo na lang na ang kapti sa book of Revelation. Mangkutunta na lang ang lawas ta, am I a prostitute or am I a faithful spouse? By the way, may I say this, I do not mean to put down prostitutes, okay? But I have interviewed prostitutes when I was in high school as a part of a high school project and it brought me to tears how some of them are making their family alive 
because that was the fastest thing that they can do to send people to school, etc. And they, many of them do not like it. They feel ashamed that they have to do it, but they do it for survival sake. So I am not putting down prostitutes as prostitutes. I'm just talking about the spirit of prostitution. We're talking about the spirit of prostitution. In the last days, ano nga spirito ang aton nga i-imbibe? The spirit of the seductress. Tandaan ta ni ang hampang sang prostitute seduction gid. The mo da mo gid ma seduce in the last days. Music, language, sights, lifestyle. That is a spirit of seduction that is empowering the spirit of the prostitute. In contrast, ang spirit sang faithful bride is one track faithful loyal to only one that affects the lifestyle, the packet, the behavior, the language, the decision making, the business, the investment. Mangita gid ang faithful spouse ya sang justification nga i-connect ang everything, ang negosyo, ang pamilya, ang relasyon. Tanan giniginakadtuan ni si Jesus, ni ginakadtuan si Jesus, si Jesus. Kay love ya gidya si Jesus amo ng faithful spouse. Ang prostitute pwede na siya. Kay Jesus pwede man siya, kay amo ni pwede man. Okay, amo na. The two great spirits in the last days. And Babylon will be destroyed towards the end of the book of Revelation. The fall of Babylon, Babylon will fall. Now, as I come near the end of this, ang question, ano ang Babylon? City? System? Person? Amo na lang ni ang punto na lang, no? Even if we do not get the details, get, let us get the spiritual point. The spiritual point is very simple. Babylon will fall. Amo nang ginakanta sa Revelation 18. The angel sing, Babylon has fallen, Babylon has fallen. Pwerteng kalipay sa mga angels nga natumba si Babylon. So, ang itsikon natin, do we have any Babylonian, Babylonian aspect in our lifestyle? In our ways, is there anything Babylonian about us? Si Papa Butz, grabe ni siya mag-lecture on the Babylonian system sa Torah studies. Basta, ang Babylon matumba. Then, the bride will be revealed. Revelations 19. Then, 1,000 years reign of Christ on earth. Okay. Siling sang iba na nga mga Christian denomination, friends, Ang 1,000 year kuno ni hindi ni literal. This kuno is a figure of speech referring already to eternity. Ako ang opinion ko, literal gining 1,000, lain pa siya sa eternity. Kaya nga, ah, kay nagalangot ang buot ko, <laughs> nga ang kalibutan, wala ni nakatilaw ginharian sang Diyos. Gusto ko ginyeng mga korap nga mga system, kag mga kawatan, kag mga lampingasan, kag mga alipungoy, Nga wala nagakilala sa ginoo, pati lawon gid kun ano maghari si Kristo ya nga ari pang kalibutan kay kun ihaboy na tanan sa impirno kag wala na sang 1000 year reign, ano na nila pagkabalo kag paano quote and quote nakabalos ang mga nagasunod kay Kristo. I mean, nga makita mo gid bla. Of course, ti uh, <laughs> Pero Kun kun eternity, okay man. Okay na malana. Pero kay ako ya, political science graduate and law, nakita ko ang system kun hindi mo bla pag itadlungon, nakita ko ang antos ng tao sa kalibutan basta hindi ka mag kun magkorap bla kag magtinunto bla sa hustisya sa panghimanwa, kaluluoy ang mga tao. Gusto ko sampulan gid nga si Kristo bla papungko agid bla. Pati lawagid lang kalibutan nga si Kristo gahari. So ako gapati gid ko ya, literal gid ang 1,000 years. Pero kung sa lagid man na, it means eternity, o oh, bahala da sila. Basta, I am looking forward to the reign of Christ. Okay. Why do I believe that this is literal? Do you know that the name of Jesus is the son of David? He will sit on his father's throne. Do you know that that throne is only in Jerusalem and Israel? Wala sang throne of David in heaven. 
the throne there is of God. How will you fulfill prophecy that He will sit on His Father's throne unless you have a literal Jerusalem kingdom ruling over all the earth? And amo na ang ako, literal view ko. Others are not literal. Okay lang na. Basta I believe that Jesus is coming soon and will sit on His Father's throne. The final doom of Satan will follow. Then the resurrection and judgment of the dead. Then the new Jerusalem and the river of life. Revelation chapter 22. And the last call in the book of Revelation is 22 verse 17. The spirit and the bride say, come. This is the last call in the book of Revelation. Okay. Here is the conclusion of the matter. If we do not understand anything about eschatology prophecy, please in the name of Jesus our Lord, please receive and understand that the last call in the Bible is the call, the call of the Spirit and the Bride. It's not about the evangelistic call or the discipleship call or the call of, it's the call of the Spirit and the Bride. All other calls are good. You have a calling, you are called to minister, to disciple, to be a missionary. Good, amen, thank you, praise the Lord. But the last call is the call of the Bride, the Spirit and the Bride. That's the last call. Question as we end. Are we the bride of Christ? That is the overview of the book of Revelation. Let's pray.